Hi folks, Dr. Robert Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Now this video is going to be about a herb called Gota Cola. Um, the Latin name for that is uh, Centella Asiatica. Um, and this herb is, uh, I think it needs a, a video um, to cover it because uh, I think it's a very interesting herb and um, it has some very interesting properties that are similar to um, many of the adaptogenic herbs that are readily available. And I don't think that Gota Cola really gets um, the plaudits that it deserves based on um, the, um, firstly, the, the literature that shows that it's uh, an effective herb for treating um, a wide range of conditions. And uh, secondly, that um, really uh, it, it has some special effects that don't see it appear to be present in some of the other adaptogenic herbs. So first of all, what is Gota Cola? Well, Gota Cola is um, it's a water loving shrub. It lives in tropical, subtropical regions. Um, it's characterized by um, kind of a heart shaped uh, leaf. It has a, a white flower. Uh, sometimes they can be pink. Um, it's quite you know widely distributed around uh, around our, our our world and um it's been used in uh, ancient chinese medicine and ayurvedic medicine which is the indian form of um, medicine um for a, a very long period of time i wouldn't like to say exactly how long but um you know estimates of thousands of years um and it has um, some very interesting properties um now it's not really usually classed as an adaptogenic herb um, it, although I think it it really should be classed with the other adaptogenic herbs. When we when we're talking about adaptogenic herbs, we're talking about herbs like Panax ginseng, uh, Siberian ginseng, uh, Rhodiola rosea. Um, there's also Brahmi. Um, uh, what else have we got? Sour date, uh, Mimosa. Uh, these are these are um, herbs that have uh, they've been classified as adaptogenic herbs because. They have the ability to return homeostatic parameters back to their uh, normal range when they are um, taken outside of that range, usually by um, stress. So um, uh, this is uh, an, an adaptogenic herbs are very interesting because they tend to be able to, for example, um, if you have low levels of something, they will write, they will raise the levels. If you have high levels of something, they will lower the levels. So they have this they have this. Um, uh, biphasic effect depending on uh, your own physiology how they actually affect you and one of the most interesting uh, properties that adaptogenic herbs have is their uh, ability to reduce stress so if you're subjected to stress the adaptogenic herbs um, they tend to be able to um, to lower cortisol levels lower stress levels uh, and this gives you uh, an adapt uh, allows you to adapt to stressful conditions more easily uh, and so the stress doesn't affect your physiology so much. So uh, they're, they're used, you know, traditionally by athletes because um, they're able to reduce the stress of, of hard training. It allows you to train more and that stress doesn't affect you so much if you're using an adaptogenic herb. Um, the three main um, adaptogenic herbs that probably most commonly, um, you know, mentioned, talked about, I'd say Panax ginseng is one, uh, ashwagandha, uh, which is also called withania uh, is another that's a, a very uh, you know popular ayurvedic herb um and po po possibly rhodiola um and, and those are the three that really quite often um we come up in conversation but the, you know the others are readily available um but i feel that gota cola really should fit into that group now if we look at the adaptogenic herbs they tend to um have active ingredients that have been investigated and identified uh, and I did do a video on adaptogenic herbs if you want to go back and look at that and see um, in more detail what these chemicals are. But they have these chemicals. They're usually um, terpenes uh, or terpene sap saponins. Um, and these chemicals um, tend to have um, the central nervous system effects and other physiological effects uh, in humans and animals. Um, the chemicals are in, in some of these herbs have not been fully isolated and, and scientists don't really understand how they work. Um, there is theories that they, you know there are theories that they, they lock on to cortisol receptors or they have um, other effects in the brain uh, where they lock on uh, and, and change neurotransmitter levels but it's not really fully understood how they work but they have these these chemicals which are uh, broad which are broadly fall into this category of, of, of terpenes 
Um, and you, you know, for example, in 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 ginseng, the terpenes are uh, called ginsenicides. They're a group of chemicals. Um, in ashwagandha, they're called withanolides. Um, they they have these names that are given to them, and these names are not for individual chemicals. They're really groups of chemicals, and not all of the chemicals in this group have really been isolated in all of these compounds. Now, gota cola is the same. It has a group of um, chemicals, and these are called asiaticicides. Um, now these these chemicals are again um, they're, they're terpene saponins, so they fall into the same chemical category uh, of most of the other um, active constituents in uh, other um, adaptogenic herbs, um, and they have very similar properties, which is why um, I feel that you know gota cola really is a, 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 a true adaptogenic herb. Um, firstly, studies have been done, and it shows that. Um, uh, go to cola extracts um, containing asiatic acides they do um, lower stress levels they do lower cortisol levels uh, and this has been done in humans and animals there have been lots of animal experiments not so many human experiments but the human experiments do support the animal experiments that they are able to uh, decrease cortisol levels decrease stress levels so if you're subjective to stress your cortisol level levels will go up if you're taking uh, go to cola extract those cor that cortisol will not rise to the same level as you would as, as it would if you weren't taking the herb in other words the stress has less of an effect on you and less and stress is very damaging to your physiology um, it, it's there for a, for a reason but you, you know when we're exposed to constant stress and stress levels are constantly high uh, that can have quite a damaging effect on our physiology so the the ability of these adaptogenic herbs to lower cortisol uh, is seen as a good thing and this is why athletes um, like these adaptogenic herbs because stress uh, exercise is a form of stress exercise causes a release of cortisol if you can lower that cortisol you can train harder you can train for longer and you can train uh, you know more often um, so the, you know go to cola has this same effect of lowering stress also um, many of the adaptogenic herbs have this um, ability to uh, decrease uh, depressive symptoms and to decrease anxiety and this possibly comes from their ability to lower cortisol levels as cortisol level go, levels go up if that cortisol remains elevated for long periods of time one of the side effects of that uh, can be the uh, development of depression uh, and there's a possibility that the anxiety uh, anxiety could be associated with the development of, uh, of depression but there could be you know other reasons for that but animals there's been a lot of animal studies that have been done on these ad adaptogenic herbs uh, and including go to cola and they and they have this ability to decrease de depression in animal models and they decrease anxiety in animal models as well um, but there have been human studies done on go to cola and go to cola has been investigated in terms of its uh, anxiolytic properties and its antidepressive properties now most of these studies have come from uh, not surprisingly from chinese uh, from indian journals and you know, tibetan journals they, you, because this is where uh, the herb is most commonly and traditionally used um, but generally what happens is over time these these journal these these studies will be replicated in western journals and, and and this is the pattern that we tend to see so the information shouldn't be dismissed just because this uh, a lot of this information hasn't come from western journals it's still useful information uh, and the information from these journals shows that there yes there is an anxiolytic effect uh, from go to cola and there is an antidepressive effect from go to cola when it's given to humans um, and obviously it's, uh, you know give it, stating a dose uh, in these studies is quite difficult because there's a range of a, a range of studies but um, somewhere around 500 milligrams twice a day appears to be you know reasonably common uh, type of uh, dose that's given to humans in order to be able to have these anti-stress antidepressive uh, and anti-anxiety effects now another common property of uh, uh, these adaptogenic herbs such as Panax ginseng, uh, Siberian ginseng, is that they seem to have this uh, ability to enhance uh, cognition. They seem to improve intelligence, particularly in the short term. Now the herb that's really renowned for this is rhodiola, uh, and I've done a video on rhodiola. Um, now rhodiola is um, very good at increasing um, intelligence in the short term. A single uh, a single dose of rhodiola will Im will improve your test scores on things like memory tests. So it's this is really the, the you know kind of the uh, of the herbs that are known the gold standard. But gota cola does have this effect as well, and the other adaptogenic uh, genic herbs do have this effect. They just don't appear to be uh, as good as rhodiola. But gota cola certainly has been shown to improve um, intelligence. It's been shown to improve cognition, memory, uh, and this is exactly what we'd expect from these um, 
you know, these active constituents like these terpene saponins that are present in the herb. They're very similar chemically to the, you know, the other terpene saponins that we find in adaptogenic herbs. And therefore we'd expect them to have the same effect. Now, the reason that rhodiola might have, um, you know, more of an effect is because it doesn't, the active constituents are not terpene saponins in rhodiola. It has um, another active constituent called rosafin, um, which is chemically um, different. And therefore, if that's the active constituent, that might be why rhodiola is uh, just that little bit better. It's got a different active constituents, probably having a different effect. But that doesn't mean that gota cola uh, doesn't have an effect. It, it has an effect that appears to be uh, very similar to the other adaptogenic herbs at improving uh, intelligence and cognition. So, you know, gota cola is, 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 is very interesting. It's got a, a range of um, an effects. And, it's, you know, in Ayurvedic medicine and Chinese medicine, it's really used as a general tonic because it has such a, a wide range of effects as well as as well as these kind of adaptogenic properties. There are other chemical components uh, in gota cola, including flavonoids. Uh, there are other polyphenols as well. There are, um, uh, there are um, you know, vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and they all may contribute to the, the you know, the general effects. And some of these effects that have been uh, measured, um, gota cola appears to reduce pain levels. Um, it uh, has an antioxidant effect. It has an anti-inflammatory effect, and it also has an anti-epileptic effect. So this is why it's such a good general tonic. Uh, it can be taken as a you know as a as a general adaptogenic herb, um, and uh, this is why it fits in with you know the same it's the same type of herb as Panax ginseng. This is exactly the same reason why somebody would take Panax ginseng. If you've got a busy, active, um, you know you know very quite stressful life. And you want something that's going to help you, you know, uh, be able to adapt to that, to be able to perform better. You know, you might look at Panax ginseng, you might look at Siberian ginseng, but I'm suggesting, you know, that you could actually look at Gota Cola. It has many of the same properties um, and, uh, you know, it could be very useful in, in, in that respect. Um, I do feel that um, maybe ashwagandha is also possibly uh, another herb that's underlooked in this respect as a, an adaptogenic herb, adaptogenic herb. It's sometimes called Indian ginseng because it, it tends to be um, more um, prized in India. Uh, Panax ginseng has come you know, really from China, but they have very similar properties. Uh, Panax ginseng always seems to get the, uh, you know, the, the plaudits, but uh, ashwagandha um, is, is also uh, you know, a very worthwhile herb looking at. So go to Kohl fits into that but gota cola has also some some other very unique uh, effects that are not present uh, in the other adaptogenic herbs or they haven't been described if they if they are present uh, and one of those effects is the ability for uh, gota cola to improve wound healing uh, now many of the studies have been done on animals but obviously w wounds uh, you know work in the same way in animals and humans there's the, there's the same physiological process generally uh, and there have been experiments that have been done in humans as well but again most of the work has been done in animals um, there's a lot of cell culture experiments that have been done um, with uh, with gota cola as well, and there's a number of a number of things that tend to happen. Is when you apply gota cola uh, gota cola to a wound, um, it, it directly and topically, um, there is an increase in the proliferation of new cells. Um, there is an increase uh, in the um, formation of collagen, which is required for you know creating scar tissue and, and, and healing the wound. And there's also an increase in the presence of new blood vessels and uh, angiogenesis in order to be able to get uh, a new blood supply to the new uh, to the new tissue. So all of these properties have been investigated, and um, when gota cola is uh, applied topically to wounds, there is um, an increased rate of healing. Uh, and this has been actually, you know, this is possibly the the you know the the, the the, the uh, function of um, gota cola that's been most heavily uh, investigated. Um, so that's very interesting. And, and most of the studies in this are very consistent. Whether taking gota cola uh, orally would, would help with that in the long term, you know, for example, if you're training, you get micro tears in your muscle, there is a possibility that's not been studied so much, but this is, this might be why, you know, gota cola is such a good, uh, you know, general tonic. If it's, if it's speeding the regeneration of tissues, uh, you know, it might be having uh, effects if you take it orally as well as a, as a general tonic. But certainly most of these studies have looked at topical application of gota cola 
and you can buy creams and, and various other uh, topical uh, applicants with um, go to cola in and that's the reason behind them now this is also some some studies have looked to um, go to cola in terms of um, healing uh, mi minor wounds major wounds uh, internal wounds external wounds uh, and generally the, 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 there is this consistent finding cell culture seems to show that go to cola can stimulate the production of new neurons um, which may be one of the reasons that it has um, um, cognitive effects to improve cognition um, and there is also um, good evidence that, this, that there is a, an ability to um, strengthen veins as well so if you have venous insufficiency which is a you know a condition whereby uh, your veins start to deteriorate and you don't have the you don't have the strength in the veins to allow your circulatory system to work properly um, go to cola does actually uh, or go to cola does actually improve the um, the structure of the veins and decrease the symptoms of, of, of venous insufficiency and this is possibly through um, a production of collagen and collagen is required for veins around the outside of the veins in order to maintain their structure so that's really um, as well as its adaptogenic properties um, which include you know an anti-stress effect uh, and uh, you know an improvement in uh, your mood through decreasing depressive symptoms and a decrease in anxiety there is also this um, general tonic effect because it's an antioxidant, it's an anti-inflammatory, it's an anti-apoleptic, uh, it re reduces pain levels. And on top of that, um, Gota Cola is also, uh, has been researched and has been shown to be a very effective wound healer. So uh, looking at the other adaptogenic herbs, um, it does all of uh, the things that they do and it also has extra properties as well. And so I wanted to do this video just to be able to, if you haven't heard of Gota Cola, it is um, widely available um, and if you're going to thinking of taking go to cola or you think it's something of interest um, there are manufacturers that produce go to cola in, in tablets and the best ones tend to be standardized for asiatic asiatic asides which are the active ingredient um, and you know it's probably worth um, considering if you're thinking of taking a you know a general tonic a herbal tonic that will give you a good all-round uh, anti-stress effect uh, it certainly uh, needs to be compared, I think, to the effects of these other adaptogenic herbs. So I hope you found that interesting. I will uh, put some links to some interesting literature in the comments box below this video so that if you want to do some further reading, you have some information to look at. As always, eat well, stay healthy and protect yourself. And I will see you soon for another video. Take care.